everybody, my name's Jude and this is Lanny and together we are Little Lamb Tales. Welcome to this week's video story blog. This week, Lanny, we're going to have a story that was one of my favourites when I was a little girl. When I was little, my mummy made me this wonderful doll and we're going to use her in the story today. So are you sitting comfortably? Are you comfy there, Lanny? Excellent, then I'll begin. A long, long time ago, in a land far away from here, there lived a little girl, and she lived with her father. She was very, very happy. Her father loved her, and he spoiled her a bit, really. One day, the father met a new lady, and he married her, and she moved into the house with her two daughters. Unfortunately, they did not like the little girl. You see, she was very pretty, and very kind, and very lovely. And they were none of these things, and soon they began to be mean and horrible to her. You, go downstairs and make me some breakfast, they said. Go upstairs and fetch my clothes. And then one day, worse than all of that, they made her work in the kitchen. And when they came down there, the stepmother said, Oh, look at you, all dirty and raggy, sitting in the, the muck from the fire. From now on, we'll call you Cinderella, because you are sitting in the cinders. Poor Cinderella. She was very, very sad. And she had to work hard every single day, fetching and carrying for her stepmother and her stepsisters. One day, a beautiful letter arrived through the post. It had a royal seal on it. Excitedly, the stepmother opened it up and pulled out the invitation inside. It was an invitation to a grand ball at the local palace. The king was trying to find a wife for his son, the prince, and he had invited every lady in the area. Oh, marvellous, said the stepsisters. We will go and the prince will dance with us and he will fall in love with one of us and he will marry us. It will be me. No, it will be me. And they started to fight and pull each other's hair. Cinderella longed to go to the ball and timidly she went up to the stepmother and said, um, Excuse me, stepmama, do you think I could go to the ball? You? Well, what on earth would you wear? And Cinderella looked down sadly her raggy clothes and thought she's right I couldn't possibly go to the prince's beautiful palace in these old rags and she went upstairs and had a bit of a cry for the next few weeks she was very very busy mending and stitching and making things for the stepmother and her stepsisters to wear to the ball and finally the night of the ball arrived and she helped them get ready and she waved them off and as soon as they'd gone, she ran down into the kitchen. She sat in the fireplace and she cried and she cried and she cried. And then, do you know what happened, Lanny? In the corner of the room, a little light appeared. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger until there in front of Cinderella stood a fairy godmother with a beautiful sparkly wand. Don't cry, child. If you want to go to the ball, it will happen. But you must do exactly as I say. Oh yes, Fairy Godmother, of course. Right, the first thing we need is a pumpkin from the garden. A pumpkin? Yes, remember, do as I say. So Cinderella went out into the garden, got a pumpkin and brought it back. And the Fairy Godmother sprinkled some magic dust over the top of it and said the magic word, as a kazam, you can do that with me if you like, as a kazam, and the pumpkin changed into the most beautiful coach Cinderella had ever seen. Hmm, that's okay, said the fairy godmother, but we need something else. Go and get me six white mice. Mice? Just do as exactly as I say. Okay, so Cinderella went into the garden, she got the mice, she brought them back, and she gave them to the fairy godmother sprinkled magic dust over the top of them and said the magic word as a kazan the mice turned into six beautiful white horses who stood by the coach hmm said the fairy godmother it's looking good but we still need more things go and fetch two lizards from the garden lizards 
said Cinderella. Yes, remember, exactly as I say. So Cinderella went into the garden, got two lizards and brought them back to the fairy godmother who sprinkled magic dust on them and said the magic word. As a kazam! The lizards changed into beautifully dressed footmen who were ready to open the door for anyone who needed to get into the coach. Hmm, we're nearly ready, said the fairy godmother, but now you must go into the garden and get me the biggest rat. Oh, really? A rat? I don't like rats, said Cinderella. Child, you must do exactly as I say. Very well, said Cinderella. She went into the garden, she got hold of the rat by its tail and she brought it to the fairy godmother, who sprinkled magic dust on it and said the magic word, as a kazam. And as quick as a flash, that rat changed into a coach driver in a wonderful outfit, who sat ready to drive the coach. Now then, said Fairy Godmother, you may go. How can I possibly go? Look at my clothes, says Cinderella. Yes, you do have a point. Close your eyes tight and I'll see what I can do. So Cinderella closed her eyes tight and the Fairy Godmother waved some dust and as a kazam, Cinderella was stood in front of her, not in rags anymore, in a beautiful ball gown with her hair piled up on her head. Now, you may go to the ball, said the fairy godmother, but remember, you must do exactly as I say. You must be home by the strike of midnight or all my magic will wear off and you will be left stood in your rags again. Oh, I will, I will remember. And Cinderella got into the coach and went off to the ball. Well, when she got there, Cinderella saw lots and lots of people in the room and in the corner she spotted her stepmother and the stepsisters but they didn't recognise her because she looked so different. Well, as soon as the prince saw her, he thought, my goodness me, she's beautiful and he asked her if she'd like to dance. And so the prince and Cinderella spent the night dancing and having a lovely time and before Cinderella knew it, the clock was starting to strike. <gasps> oh no, she said, I must go. No, no, please don't go to the prince. I don't even know your name. No, I must go, I must go. And with that, she ran off, leaving behind one of her slippers as she raced down the stairs. And as she got into the coach, the magic wore off. And she did, in fact, find herself standing once more in her rags. She just about made it home by the time her stepmother and stepsisters arrived. Oh, there was this terribly ghastly girl there and she kept talking to the prince all night and he didn't dance with us at all. Really? said Cinderella. Was she pretty? Oh well, I suppose she was very pretty really. But anyway, we're just cross because he didn't even look at us. Typical. And the two sisters flounced off upstairs to bed. And Cinderella went to bed with a bit of a smile on her face. The very next day, the prince went to his father and said, Father, I found the girl I want to marry. The only thing is, I don't know who she is or where she is. What do you mean, said the king? How ridiculous. Did you not ask her her name? Well, no, father, I was too busy having a lovely time with her. She did leave this. And he held up in his hand a beautiful, dainty glass slipper. Right, you must search the land until you find the lady that fits this slipper, said the king. Okay, so the prince got on his horse and off he went around the country, checking all the ladies. And lots of ladies tried the glass slipper, but none of them fitted. And at last he came to Cinderella's house, which was the last house in the area. He knocked on the door. Cinderella opened the door. She couldn't believe it. But of course the prince did not recognise her in her raggy clothes. Can I help you, your majesty, she said. Yes, I need you to bring all the ladies of the house into the room so they may try on this glass slipper. Whoever it fits is the lady I'll marry. Oh, it'll be me, it'll be me, said both the stepsisters, running and pushing down the stairs. And they tried to squeeze their feet into this glass slipper, but it was no good. Surely there must be some other ladies around. Oh, no, 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 we're the only ones. What about her? said the prince, pointing to Cinderella. Cinderella? 
She's just the servant girl. Well, I said every lady should try it on. So come and sit down. So Cinderella sat down, put out her foot and slipped on the slipper. And quick as a flash, the magic happened. And once more, she found herself standing in her beautiful clothes. <gasps> Cinderella, said her stepsisters. And the prince saw her and said, Cinderella, I would like to marry you and make you my princess. And so the prince and Cinderella got married. And do you know something? They lived happily ever after. The end. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.